So, now we talk about the MQTT broker. The broker, as mentioned previously, is the central hub of the entire MQTT network. It is the intermediary between the MQTT clients, which can be sensors or other devices that are sending and receiving data. One of the broker's primary responsibilities is to route the messages sent from clients uh, that are publishing to appropriate clients that are subscribing on the defined topics. And as mentioned, these topics are acting like communication channels between um, publishing clients and subscription clients. Without the MQTT broker, there isn't an MQT MQTT network. Um, and the broker is also responsible for global network requirements, such as what network ports are used, what are the authentication requirements, how it retains messages, it manages the connections, checking if the clients are active, sending last will and testaments where appropriate, disconnect, disconnecting when needed. It also can specify the maximum size of the message, the maximum number of messages that are allowed, the type of the MQTT version that it supports and so on. Other responsibilities, and here's a list of them right now. We talked about the message routing. We looked at topic management. It looked, does subscription management. It does quality of service management. It can specify the highest level of quality of service that a client can use. Um, and this can be useful if you want to ensure your network operates within certain latency and bandwidth requirements. It manages the persistence. It can retain messages for specific clients but it can also retain messages to a database. So if the broker restarts, it can um, ensure no data is lost. It's responsible for setting up security, as mentioned, the authentication requirements. Do you need a password, username? Can you, it can do whitelisting uh, of particular usernames, and it can also set up full encrypted network um, TLS levels if required. Sometimes you may use it for load balancing. If you have multiple brokers deployed, um, you can use it to balance uh, highly congested networks. And brokers can also be used to scale outwards uh, via a mechanism called bridging to ensure that your um, infrastructure can scale horizontally. Then the clients. So MQTT clients are typically devices on the network that are sending and receiving the data. They'll connect to the network via the broker. They have to adhere to the rules of the network. The broker enforces. If they don't, it will be disconnected with an error message. When sending data, the clients are called publishers. And when publishing, uh, sub receiving data, they're called subscribers. Clients do not have addresses to talk to directly to each other. It's all communication is done via the topics through the broker. MQTT clients have to send a keep alive message, which defaults to every 60 seconds, telling the broker they are still connected. And on initial co connection, clients can send their last will and testament. So if the client is designed to stay connected to a broker, you may want it to issue a message if it gets unintentionally disconnected, such as client disconnected. And uh, when it reconnects, you can send a message such as client connected. All clients have to have a client name or a client ID, and it must be unique. If you have two clients connecting to a broker with the same client ID, the new, newly connected device could knock the existing device off or the existing client will not allow the newly connecting device to connect. Uh, and these results in connection issues um, that can sometimes be difficult to resolve, but generally you will get error messages as to why you're being disconnected or to why you cannot connect to the network. Clients can also connect with a clean session if a clean session is specified, the broker will not remember anything for that client ID. If a non-clean session is specified, the broker will remember it and will hold undelivered messages for that client. The typical default is to connect with a clean session, um, but depending on your MQTT and network requirements, you may not want that. You may want guaranteed delivery of messages no matter what. The packets themselves, the MQTT data packets, will consist of a two-byte fixed header that's always in there. They can have a variable control header, which may or may not be present, and they may, they'll may they have a payload, which may not always be present as well. Data packets, so when you're sending data, they will always have a payload, but the initial connection messages, for example, may not, may not have a payload at all. And the control headers are encoding all the control information and um, specifying various aspects of the MQTT uh, client configurations that the broker can check 
um, such as do you want to have a clean session, such as do you want messages retained, and so on, that the broker can be used to identify how the client wants to be handled. An MQT publisher is the client sending data to the broker, and to publish, a minimum client needs to specify the address and port it's publishing to, the topic it's publishing to, the message, quality of service at once, if left unspecified it will always default to zero, a client ID, and again if no client ID is specified, typically the client software will auto-generate one, and an optional retain flag, telling the broker to hold onto a message or not. An example command is shown below using Mosquito Pub, which is an off-the-shelf client software available for Windows and Linux. And to the left is a PLC block by Siemens for an MQTT client, where you can hard code the data you want into the MQTT client and configure it as you wish. Um, the Mosquito Publish here, you can see it is sending data to this address, testmosquito.org, specifying a port of 1883, its topic, remain demo temp. In this case, we went all uppercase, but again, using good topic um, creation you practice, you could go all lowercase as well, try and avoid a mix of both. Sending its message, in this case, temperature, 21.3 degrees Celsius, and all messages are sent as strings, and is specifying a quality of service of zero. Further on within this um, course, we will look at MQTT clients configured using both these command line applications and PLC based blocks. The flow for the publisher is shown below uh, and the flow depends on what the quality of service is specified. If the publisher spe connects for example with quality of service to zero, you don't expect any acknowledges coming back from the broker as quality of service zero specifies a fire and forget. But if you use the highest quality of uh, service, which is two, you'll have a number of interactions with the broker as the broker confirms reception of the message and confirms delivery of the message. The subscribers, they listen for messages coming from other clients via the broker. And to subscribe at a minimum, the following is required. Again, an address and port it's subscribing to, and that is the address and port that the, the address of the broker and the port that the broker has specified for MQTT communications. The topic it's subscribing to, the quality of service, again, if left unspecified, will typically default to zero, and the client ID. And again, if left um, empty, it'll be auto-generated, typically by the software used. And below is an example command shown using the Mosquito sub off-the-shelf client software available both for Windows and Linux. And again, you can see it's specifying address, testmosquito.org, a port, 1883, and a topic and a quality of service. The client ID is there, you just haven't specified it manually in this particular instance. Subscribers can also listen for party defined topics or listen to all topics that the broker has using the wildcards that we talked about when we were looking at topics. And again, the wildcard symbols are the plus and hash symbol. But if you wanted to listen to all topics on a broker, assuming the broker allows this, you can subscribe simply with topic set to hash, and that will give every single message going through the broker. Generally, you may not want to do this, but if you're doing a general debug, then it could be useful. So that is the general introduction to uh, MQTT. Um, I'd like to say thank you for paying attention, and I'm looking forward to um, demoing actual real MQTT applications in the upcoming lessons. Just a reminder, this project has been brought to you by Erasmus Plus. Um, and please check out other content created by our partners um, as part of the Erasmus Plus Remain 